Ukrainian Defense Minister Rustem Umarov confirmed that Ukrainian troops fought North Korean forces for the first time since Pyongyang sent its forces to help Russia. The minister made the corresponding statement in an interview with South Korean media Politico reports. According to Umarov, there were small-scale clashes between Kiev forces and North Korean soldiers. He did not provide any more details. The head of Ukraine's Center for Countering Disinformation, Andrei Kovalenko, said on Monday that North Korean troops have already come under fire in Russia's Kursk region. Asked whether North Korea's participation meant an official entry into the war, Umarov replied, Yes, I think so. These were clashes. We expect that in the coming weeks, there will be more involvement of DPRK forces at the front. He added, Sources in Defense Intelligence of Ukraine have confirmed that the first clash between Ukrainian forces and North Korean troops has taken place in Russia's Kursk Oblast, according to the Financial Times. A senior Ukrainian intelligence official confirmed the military engagement between units of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea and the Ukrainian military to the Financial Times, but declined to provide the specifics. He said the clash took place in Russia's Kursk Oblast, where Ukraine controls around 60 square kilometers, slightly more than the area its forces controlled immediately following this summer's Kursk offensive. Reported Tuesday, citing a senior Ukrainian and senior United States official. The Ukrainian official offered no details about casualties, but the US officials said to the New York Times a significant number of North Korean troops were killed, according to the newspaper. The engagement was limited, and the North Koreans fought together with the Russian Naval Infantry Brigade, according to the Ukrainian official, the newspaper reported, adding it was unclear when the fighting took place. Over the weekend, defense intelligence of Ukraine said that Russia had armed the North Korean troops in Kursk with 60mm mortars, assault rifles, machine guns, sniper rifles, anti-tank guided missiles and shoulder-launched anti-tank rocket launchers. Defense intelligence of Ukraine also stated that some North Korean soldiers had also been provided with night vision devices and thermal images. A few hundred troops from North Korea's special forces have also been deployed in Kursk. Ukrainian officials and military analysts have raised questions about the quality and combat effectiveness of the North Korean troops, describing most of them as inexperienced, low-ranking soldiers. We will know soon how well they can fight, one of the officials told the Financial Times. Another high-ranking Ukrainian official said that Moscow was already providing military technologies to Pyongyang to help with its missile programs, as well as money. The Pentagon estimates that North Korea has deployed 10 to 12,000 troops in Russia's Kursk region and warns that the troops would become legitimate military targets if they engage in combat support operations against Ukraine. Placing these additional 10 to 11 to 12,000 forces in Kursk is definitely something from a combat capability standpoint that could be significant, said Pentagon spokesperson Major General Pat Ryder. But a lot of that will depend on how those forces are employed, how they're integrated into the Russian command and control," he said. On Monday, South Korea and the European Union strongly condemned North Korea's reported dispatch of troops to aid Russia's war against Ukraine and expressed concerns that Russia could reward North Korea with transfers of sensitive technology to enhance its nuclear and missile programs. North Korea's troop deployment, confirmed by the US and NATO threatens to expand the almost three-year-long war and is causing security jitters in South Korea and elsewhere about what Russia could give North Korea in return. Just days ago, Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky urged its allies to stop, watching, and take steps before North Korean troops deployed in Russia reached the battlefield, and the country's army chief warned that his troops are facing one of the most powerful offensives by Moscow since the all-out war started more than two years ago. Zelensky raised the prospect of a preemptive Ukrainian strike on camps where the North Korean troops are being trained and said Kiev knows their location. But he said Ukraine can't do it without permission from allies to use Western-made long-range weapons to hit targets deep inside Russia. If North Korean troops start fighting against Ukraine forces, it would mark North Korea's first participation in a large-scale conflict since the end of the 1950-53 Korean War. Well, just a few things at the top, and uh, I'll be glad to take questions.
We believe that there are now at least 10,000 DPRK forces in the Kursk Oblast, uh, recognizing that as we continue to assess DPRK presence on the ground, those numbers could go up slightly in terms of the total number of DPRK troops in Russia. Um, we've seen the press reports uh, about alleged combat ops. We're looking into those, but at this point cannot corroborate those reports. Um, but as you heard Secretary Austin say last week, should these troops engage in combat support operations against Ukraine, uh, they would become legitimate military targets. With the deployment of additional ballistic missile defense destroyers, fighter squadrons, and tanker aircraft, and placing uh, these additional, you know, 10 to 11 to 12,000 forces uh, in Kursk is definitely something uh, from a combat capability standpoint that could be significant, but a lot of that will depend on how those forces are employed, how they're integrated into the Russian command and control, uh, and of course, uh, if the Ukrainians, if, if the past is any indicator of the future, uh, the Ukrainians are uh, battle-hardened veterans uh, who know how to fight, uh, and so uh, every indication that, that they will continue to defend uh, Ukrainian sovereignty and continue to defend Kursk, uh, uh, the territory that they've taken. And so we'll see how that plays out. Several U.S. Air Force vehicles to long range strike bombers to the U.S. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has dismissed his popular defense minister, Yov Gallant, in a surprise announcement. Netanyahu and Gallant have repeatedly been at odds throughout the war in Gaza. But Netanyahu had avoided firing his rival. A previous attempt to fire Gallant in March 2023 sparked widespread street protests against Netanyahu. The Prime Minister announced his decision late Tuesday. During wartime, more than ever, a complete trust between the Prime Minister and the Defense Minister is essential. Unfortunately, while we initially had this trust and accomplished much in the early months of the campaign, over recent months, that trust between me and the defense minister has eroded, Netanyahu said in a statement. Netanyahu explained that there were major differences between him and Gallant. Israel Katz, the current foreign minister of Israel, will become defense minister and Gideon Sayar will replace Katz as foreign minister. Iran menasa lifgoa bi Israel. Ha ze matkhil ma Gaza wa over le Lebanon wa mamshikh le Teiman wa le Iraq wa mkomot akherim wa anahu be kol mkomot ale bolmim wa makim otam. Sha netivim nisgarim ha derakh shelahem lifol ze lazrim le toch Yehuda wa Shomron et kol ma shem yikholim. Gam kesef גם מטענים, גם נשק וגם כאלה שיכולים להדריך או לאפשר או להפעיל. <עוד>